If you've got enough cash in the bank to splash out one of those snazzy new Galaxy Note 20 series handsets, you'll find that it's got Samsung's latest One UI version 2.5 launcher slapped on there. And the One UI launcher basically tweaks the look and feel of Android and also adds in a bunch of very useful features indeed, including a bit of one-handed help. And if you already own a Samsung handset like the Galaxy S20, for instance, then you'll be getting the One UI version 2.5 update too. And don't expect any massive new overhauls or crazy new features though. And this is very much an incremental update, but that's there are still some great new bits chucked in there that are well worth a squint. And if you just treated yourself to a fresh new Note 20 handset, well, here's my full tips and tricks guide to take a closer look at some of those fresh new features and also a look at the best bits that are still in there from previous generations. And for more the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, first up, the Note 20, like a lot of Samsung smartphones, is a mite on the large side, but Samsung has at least recognized this and thrown in a lot of one-handed help. All you've got to do is scroll down to Advanced Features, and then if you scroll down, you will find One-Handed Mode. Just make sure that this little toggle switch here is active, and then you'll be able to use it. And now, say you're walking down the high street, you've got an urgent message, but you're also desperately trying to keep control of some crazy toddler or something like that. All you've got to do is swipe down that bottom edge of the display right in the middle, and everything will shrink right down. No more awkward stretching up to the top end of the display for anything that you need. Speaking of stretching all the way up to the top end of that mighty display, you don't have to do that to pull down the notifications bar either. All you need to do is just swipe your finger down from anywhere on the desktops. Ta-da! And to activate this feature, all you gotta do is pinch your fingers on the desktop and go to home screen settings. And you'll see an option right in there, swipe down for notification panel. Just make sure that is active job done. Now one of the best new features here on One UI version 2.5 is actually for people who aren't fans of One UI. So if you don't really like the UI on your smartphone or you want to drastically change up the look, maybe get a completely different vibe from it, the easiest way of doing that is installing a third-party launcher. You can download these from the Google Play Store, quite a few of them are free, and I've rounded up my favourites right here on Techspert, the likes of Nova Launcher, Poco Launcher, Lawn Chair Launcher. They all offer something a bit different and come with their own set of benefits. One of the most popular launchers around is the Nova Launcher, and once you've downloaded it from the Google Play Store, just go to Settings, and then tap Apps, and then you want to tap this three dot icon at the top and go to Default Apps. And then last up, tap Home Map and you'll be able to change to whatever launch you've just downloaded. Now, the one big ball ache about using third-party launchers like Nova on a Samsung smartphone, at least back in the day, was that they did not support gesture navigation. But now, One UI version 2.5 brings that feature in, so you most certainly can get that on the go. Again, very handy indeed, given the size of these bloody things. Now, when it comes to the camera, you won't find any massive new features in One UI version 2.5, but what you will find is a few little refinements and tweaks to existing features, some of which are really bloody good. One of the least exciting updates is to the single take feature introduced on the Galaxy S20 series smartphones. This just allows you to change the duration between 5 to 15 seconds before you start shooting. And if you have no idea what single take is, it basically is quite good for those action moments when you're not sure whether to shoot lots of photos or a video. It basically does both for you and then compiles them all together in a big old gallery. So basically all you've got to concentrate on is aiming the camera in vaguely the right direction. But Samsung has definitely crammed the best new features of One UI version 2.5 into the pro video modes. You'll notice a couple of nifty new bits in this little toolbar here. One of my favorites being the new zoom slider. What this allows you to do is just very gently pan zoom into your subject like so. Otherwise, you can just sort of crash about the place if you like as well. And another very worthy addition is the mic feature as well. What this allows you to do is switch up exactly what audio is recorded. So be it omnidirectional, which is the default setting. Otherwise, everything that's in front of the phone, so your commentary, or everything that's behind the phone, so everything that you're pointing at. If you want to, you can even quickly and easily hook up a Bluetooth mic if you want some really nice sound and audio. And if you dive on into the aspect ratio section as well, you'll also see that you've now got the option to shoot 8K video in 21 by 9 stretched aspect, as well as that standard 16 by 9. And this just adds some proper cinematic flair to your whole movies as well. So if you do actually fancy yourself as a bit of an indie director, that could do the job nicely. Now these days, contactless payments have become more essential than ever as we try to avoid touching or even looking at our fellow human beings. And thankfully, Samsung Pay makes it easier than ever to avoid strangers like, well, like the plague. So you're at the shop, you want to pay for something and just get the heck out of there. No worries. All you need to do is swipe your finger up from the very bottom edge of the display. This will then bring up Samsung Pay. All you need to do is verify your identity using the fingerprint sensor, and then you'll be ready for action. Now just tap the back of your Samsung Galaxy smartphone against the card reader. That NFC chip will work its magic and the payment will be taken. And if you need to actually set up Samsung Pay, then no worries. That's quick and easy. Just jump on into biometrics 
Safe's and Security, and then Fingerprints. And once you've actually added a fingerprint, you'll notice the Samsung Pay option pops up in that menu. And from this menu, you can add new credit cards, and you can also remove any old cards that you no longer need. And you can also play around with those quick access settings as well if you're not a fan. So for instance, if you find you're constantly accidentally activating Samsung Pay from the home screen, just deactivate that option. And if you use gesture navigations, then I find that occasionally I do accidentally load up Samsung Pay by trying to get to the recent app screen or whatever. So it's best to have that switched off. It doesn't matter. When it comes time to pay for something in a store, all you need to do is have your phone set to the hibernation screen, swipe up in the middle again, and boom, back into Samsung Pay. Now, another new One UI version 2.5 feature that I'll just briefly mention is Samsung's new point to share feature. This basically allows you to aim your Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra at another Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and share documents and other files with just a quick tap. Basically, you just gotta find the file, hit share, and then it's another option that pops up in there. Unfortunately, Point to Share uses ultra wideband tech, and the only Samsung phone that this is found in right now is, yes, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. But hopefully, give it a bit more time, it'll become a more standard feature found in a lot more Samsung phones, so that'll actually be a handy tool. Otherwise, you've just got to hope that yourself and your friends and family are all rich enough to afford Note 20 Ultra so you can actually use it. Now, if you happen to have yourself one of the new Note 20 handsets, then of course, one of the best features is that S Pen stylus, which is secreted away in the bottom orifice. It's now better than ever here in the Note. 20 series thanks to the near zero latency so it does feel incredibly natural sketching with this thing but it's not just the hardware that's improved samsung has also improved its notes app in a couple of key ways as well a couple of these could be quite useful if you're quite a messy scribbler so for instance down here at the bottom you've now got a straightened text feature however one of the best features in notes for anyone who does a lot of interviews for instance or any students who actually attend a lot of lectures instead of just skiving off down the pub is the ability to record audio as you're taking written notes so you're scribbling some notes but at some point you want to record an audio file all you do is hit insert up at the top here and then go to voice recordings and this wee jobby here will pop up to show that your galaxy note is recording audio at the same time as you're scribbling and best of all the note will actually remember exactly what you were writing down at the time you were shooting that audio so then when you stop so when you tap on this little audio arrow bit and then start to play the recording you'll see your exact scribblings will pop up on the screen at the same time as the audio has played, so it all syncs up nicely. Now, if you're going to grab yourself an absolute whopper of a smartphone like a Galaxy Note or an S20, then you might as well make the most of that mighty display with a bit of split screen action. An entrance split screen mode is nice and easy thanks to the edge screen efforts. All you need to do is go into an app and then pull out the edge screen using the little tab on the side here. You can then take another app out by long pressing on it and dragging it to the screen, and then boom, you're in split display mode, which is particularly handy for watching a bit of video action on YouTube or whatever up top, and then just having a bit of a browse your, uh, your internet or your emails or whatever you fancy on the rest of the screen. And if you find that there's a split screen app combo that you use a lot, for instance, YouTube and Chrome, well, you can actually save it as well. Just press on this center little tab in between the two windows and then tap this little icon to the right. And then when you jump into that edge screen toolbar again, you'll see your combo has been saved. So you can bring it up again quick and easy. And if you want to customize that edge screen toolbar, that's nice and easy. You just go into your Galaxy settings, go to display, and you'll find edge screen in there. And I really like the way that the One UI interface handles notifications as well. If you dive into the settings again, scroll down to advanced features, and inside of there, you'll find the option Smart Pop-Up View. Now, when you get notifications for any apps that you select in here, these will pop up on the display as a mini icon that you can tap to expand, just like Facebook Messenger. And I find this really handy for the likes of WhatsApp, things like that. You can just have them pop up on a little dinky window so you can actually respond to messages without having to minimize whatever app you are currently messing about in. And I also rather enjoy the snazzy edge lighting feature as well. Again, dive into the settings this time, go to display, scroll all the way down to edge screen, and your edge lighting feature is tucked away in there. From here, you can choose exactly which apps actually use the edge lighting. You can also choose from quite a wide variety of different edge effects. I personally like the multi-color option but if you want something that's a bit more dramatic a bit more easy to notice then definitely go for eclipse and you can even mess around with the color and the duration as well at the edge lighting effect which is pretty cool so right there is just a selection of some of the best one ui 2.5 features some new stuff and some classic stuff that's still in there to help you get you started with your new note 20 handset and of course if you've got the s20 or various other samsung smartphones they should be getting one ui version 2.5 very soon indeed if you want a closer look at some of the other great features packed away in there, I did a Samsung One UI version 2 tips and tricks guide with some extra bits chucked in there as well, so definitely go check that out. And for more of the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers!